In putting this video together, I had a really hard time choosing a single angle to talk about the Dave Smith Poly Evolver. So here's a list of some of the angles that I'm going to use to talk about it because there's so much here. One, I'm gonna argue that this is arguably the most interesting synth that's come out in the last 30 years. Two, that you can also view this as Dave Smith's flagship comeback instrument. And three, that this is probably one of the nerdiest synths you'll ever come across. Let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Zach Marr from Alamo Music here in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, turn on your notifications. This is our Alamo Sound Lab channel where we talk about all things music tech related. And today we're talking about the Dave Smith Poly Evolver. And this synth holds a really special place in my heart and my synthesizer journey. I still remember playing this on the NAMM showroom floor in the OO years and being having my mind blown. I didn't know a lot about synthesizers at the time. And this was one of the first two synths I bought with my own money. The other one couldn't be arguably uh, more on the opposite edge. It was a Chuno G. And we also just recently did a video on it. I'm not sure which of these will come out first. And the other one I bought later, but it was my second synth, was the Dave Smith Poly Evolver, which really spoke to me on the NAMM showroom floor. I remember having headphones in and just being like, what is this? What are these sounds? I've never heard anything like this. At the time, I wasn't super familiar with the difference between digital and analog synthesizers. I just was fascinated by the sounds that came out of this instrument. And it took me many, many years to appreciate this instrument, to appreciate what it's capable of, and to appreciate the design choices that were made in its production. And I still feel like it's not completely understood. It's been a little bit forgotten. Even with the massive rise of Dave Smith Instruments and Sequential and their kind of second wave of, they're one of the most mentioned companies in today's synth market. This, the Poly Evolver is not particularly talked about. It's It's kind of early Dave Smith instruments when he got back together, got the band back together in 2002, I think. Um, this was, I think, their first flagship polysynth. And it's super interesting because the way I understand it is it's almost like Dave Smith picked up where he left off in his massive career innovating and creating some of the most groundbreaking synths for his sequential company, for Korg and Yamaha when he worked for both of those companies, and finally for himself again with this instrument. And the template here, one, it's a beautiful design, beautiful layout, the color scheme is awesome, but the Prophet 12, the Prophet X, the um, Prophet 08, the Rev 2, a lot of those synths, you can see design choices all the way back here. You can see elements of those synths here in the design of the Poly Evolver, which, I, again, I, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but it was, if not the first, or one of the first Poly synths he made in the Dave Smith instrument rebranding, relaunch. And I'm gonna argue that it's the most kind of creative and, and interesting synth that's been designed for many years since 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 kind of ground break, break, the groundbreaking 80s when people were pushing the limits of synthesis and it seemed like there was just always a new thing happening. Um, and then it kind of plateaued in the 90s and we got into workstations and romplers and sampling and BSTs. And this was the first, in my opinion, synth that picked up where that history left off and started again pushing technology forward. And the reason why is it it has elements in it that you don't find in any other synth still to this day. It has four oscillators, two digital and two analog. The analog are DCO oscillators, and they are both 
hardwired to be stereo. So they're hardwired left and right. Um, and the analog, there's one that's left, one that's right. Digital, one that's left, that's one that's right. And the digital waveforms are based rough, loosely on the Prophet VS waveforms. And you get something really interesting with them being hardwired left and right. You have filters that are independent for the left and right um, channels. And uh, you're able to affect those filters independently. Normally with the low pass filter um, controls, it affects them both. But through modulation or through this left-right split, you can break their their kind of uh, break the control so that there are different, so you're getting different stereo filter effects on the oscillators. And that's just one of many things inside the synth that make it incredibly unique. I don't see this on any of the other Dave Smith instruments, and I don't see that design choice in any other synthesizers that I'm aware of. You also have this crazy sequencer here that it's four by 16, and it is just madness. It allows for polyrhythms, it allows for different arpeggiating patterns, different sequencing patterns, and it's just bonkers. It's it's really fun to play with. You get a lot of interesting sounds, um, and you can do a lot of modulation with it, and it's just another part of what makes this magical. In addition to that, you also have the normal kind of bonkers modulation possibilities that is kind of indicative of Dave Smith instruments in general. I Even when you look back at the Prophet 5, the polymod section, he's always been, or Dave Smith has always really pushed, tried to give a lot of options with modulation and with kind of sound design and just his instruments are so much fun and so inspiring to play with. Really very cool. But this one in particular, I think it's it's almost like a love letter to synthesizers. And I see it, you could see it, and this is where earlier when I mentioned this is arguably also one of the nerdiest instruments that ever was designed. Even in the patches, there's patches that are referencing all sorts of previous kind of synth history. There's one called the Broken CS80. Um, there's all sorts of... Uh, references to other analog synths or just kind of goofy little jokes, insider jokes. The manual itself, there it says at one point, it's like, we're going to assume that you understand the basic uh, definitions of a synthesizer. And with Google, it's so easy to learn. So just search it if you're confused. I mean, the it's a very, look up the manual. It's funny to read because there's a couple kind of just, it's, it doesn't read like a modern manual. It reads like something that someone put together on a word pad. And it really feels like a garage band put this instrument together. And it's a garage band that understands music really well. And it's very, it, it wasn't, this was, this almost feels like it was designed out of a true love and passion for synthesis and synthesizers and not as much for with it the idea that it was marketable. Um, you see in the Prophet 12 and the Prophet X, which people sometimes argue are the heirs to the Polyevolver, specifically the Prophet 12, the choices that are made kind of rein in the oddities that are found in the Polyevolver and make it a little bit, it probably spoke to the market more, made it more usable. Um, the Prophet 08, the Prophet Rev 2, all those things were are very palatable, but they weren't as boundary pushing as the poly evolver. And I think that's what makes this instrument still so interesting. It's so expressive. It's got incredibly rich sounds that it produces. I think sometimes it gets misunderstood because a lot of the patches in here do sound really bad. It almost feels like they were designed as a joke sometimes. Like the broken CSAD is an, an example. There's 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 patches called like unusable. You know, they they were just having fun. There's a ton of factory patches. There's some good ones in here, but there's a lot of bad ones. Um, so I think sometimes people misjudge the synth based on the presets, but also it's not the easiest synth to program, particularly the sequencer and the uh, just different, the, the way the, the choices that were made are unique to the synth. So there isn't a lot of reference points. And so it really 
is an amazing sounding instrument. It has amazing programming possibilities, but it, it invites itself to be explored over and over again. It's really one of these one-off instruments. People also knock on it because it's only four voices. You have to get, um, you can you can polychain it with um, instruments from the Evolver family to get additional polyphony, but a lot of people get frustrated with the four voices. They also, it has a particular kind of spectrum that it inhabits. You know, it's not super low endy, and it's not doesn't sound digital, and it doesn't sound analog. It's got its own kind of timbre, its own kind of palette. It's very unique sounding, and you know, even in the manual, it says with the digital oscillators, they get really like the Prophet VS voices in the higher frequencies. They get really trashy sounding, but that's part of the magic. You just get sounds out of this that you don't get out of any other synthesizer, and I think that's what makes it magical. It's ability to just go all over the place rhythmically and from a modulation standpoint is also part of its magic. The The signal path with the hard wiring stereo creates all sorts of interesting stereo effects. It just, I've never, it's one of the sense I know that I will never sell because it just, there's nothing that's like it. And I, I, I've said that multiple times now, but I really, it's an amazing synth. I. It's too bad that it's not kind of appreciated for how much of a love letter and how much of a kind of boundary pushing synth this is. It really does speak to Dave Smith's prophetic kind of synth vibe that he has going on. Um, there's an anecdote that he was going to call this noise. That was going to be the name of the synth, but his wife, when she saw it, thought it was too beautiful. And so Poly Evolver became the name. And is honestly one of the most beautiful synths I've ever seen. And the only other synth that I think is potentially arguably more interesting um, from kind of a pushing synthesizers forward standpoint would be the, the recently released um, Polybrute from Arcturia. I think that's also a very forward looking synth. But this is really one of the most interesting pieces that's come out since the 90s, uh, or since the late, since the 80s, sorry even before the 90s. I really, I think you can argue that it is. Um, so let's take a listen and then we'll conclude with some final thoughts. Thank <laughs> you. 
So there you have it. I tried to play a variety of sounds on it so you got a good kind of idea of the different possibilities found in this instrument. I still am exploring it, still learning it. Really, the left-right split filter knob and the audio mod, which sends the oscillators to modify the, um, the filters on either side as well. Those are some of the funnest knobs to use, as well as the modulation of the filters on the left and right side. Really where some of the magic lies, as well as the sequencer. Um, really, it's a deep synth, and I still feel like it's it's been recognized as a modern classic, but I think that its reputation will continue, and its legend will continue to grow over time, just because it's so unique. I really, I, I really hope, some synth designer takes some elements of this and reintroduces it. The filter it uses is a Curtis filter, um, and it's DCO, so it's not a VCO Curtis. It's a, it's not even a Curtis uh, oscillator. It's a digitally controlled oscillator, and the DSP controls a lot of the controls the effects. There's tune feedback, the high pass filter, distortion, output cut. All those are controlled from the DSP. Um, so it's got a lot. It's very digital but it doesn't sound like a digital synth. It sounds like a hybrid in a very interesting one. So we'd love to hear your thoughts. What's your experience with the Poly Evolver? Have you ever had to, ever got to play one? What do you think of the way it sounds? Did I leave anything out? What else deserves to be considered one of the best synths of the last 30 years, kind of post great analog vintage era? We'd love to hear your thoughts and comments below. Again, if you would like to talk more, come visit us at alamomusic.com. I'd love to talk to you via chat, phone, email, whatever. And again, if you didn't hit subscribe, please do if you want to see more videos like this. And thank you for watching.